All right. <laughs> Hi again, everyone. In the last video, we did estimating the difference of two populations proportion. In this video, we're going to do estimating the difference of two population means. Independent samples, very important. So basically, we are going to be estimating mu1 minus mu2. I went over a couple of definitions here very shortly. Independent samples are samples that are not related. So basically, or you can pick your sample from two different populations, or if it's the same population, they're completely different samples. That These are independent samples. Dependent samples, or sometimes we call them match pairs. So sometimes is it is the same sample we survey before and after an experiment. So what do I mean by that? Matched pair are usually you take a sample and you do a procedure to that sample or an experiment and you want to compare the results before and after. So these are called matched pairs. We are gonna go, well, we are gonna go over that later on, but in this uh, section or in this lecture, we're gonna only be dealing with independent sample, samples. So again, we're doing confidence interval. By now it's pretty straightforward. So mu one minus mu two is a number between X bar one minus X bar two minus E and x bar one minus x bar two plus e. x bar one is the mean of sample one, x bar two is the mean of sample two, and e is margin of error. You need to be careful because this is a little bit different. There are three different cases. So listen to the lecture very carefully. We're gonna go over all three of them. Values of E. So X bar one and X bar two, they're pretty easy to calculate. Now let's see how we can calculate E. The first case, E equals to Z sub alpha over two times squared of sigma one squared over N one plus sigma two squared over N two. You do that at sigma one and sigma two are known, very rare. But when these two are known, you use Z, standard normal. If you use your calculators, again, go to stat, highlight test. Now scroll to number nine, and you're gonna see two sample Z interval. The calculator when you input is gonna have data or stats. If you're, you just have N1, X bar one, or S1 and S2, just highlight stats, then enter the values. Oh, so they we're talking about sigma, sigma one, sigma two, X bar one, X bar two, N1, N2, these are pretty straightforward. Then put the confidence level and calculate and calculator will give you the confidence level or the confidence interval. Case number two, E equals to T sub alpha over two times squared of S sub one squared over N one plus S sub two squared over N two. If sigma one and sigma two are not known, and we assume that sigma one is not equal to sigma two. Basically, you can say that you did not pick the samples from the same population. So the population have different standard deviation. And when we use <clears throat> T, this is the student T distribution. We learn about this. We use that always when we have S, or in this case, S1 and S2. We do need the degrees of freedom to find the critical T values because they are dependent on the sample sizes. In this case, we take the smaller of N1 minus one or N2 minus one. 
little note for you. So, and well, in this case, I say samples are picked from two different populations. So therefore we can assume that sigma one and sigma two are not equal. That's what we use most of the time. Now, in this case, you can use the formula, but you can directly go to the calculator. So stat, go and highlight test, the third item on the right side, then scroll down to zero. You're gonna see two sample T interval. Then the calculator is gonna ask you, I wrote that in red, pulled, no, yes. This is not pooled because we assume sigma one is not equal to sigma two. So you highlight no, and then you just calculate and your calculator will give you the interval. Case number three, E equals to, again, we have T sub alpha over two times squared up, but here we have S sub P squared over N one plus S sub P squared over N2. Here, what's the assumption? Sigma one and sigma two are unknown, but we assume that sigma one equals to sigma two, or think we pick the two samples from the same population. So the population standard deviation is the same for both. The degrees that are di different degrees of freedom for this one calculator will do it for you. It's a different answer. But if you want to use hand calculations, you can do N2 plus N1 minus two. What is SP? SP is the pooled sample variance. We're going to see this later too. But S sub P, this is the formula. N1 minus one times S1 squared plus N1 minus one times S sub two squared divided by N1 minus one plus N2 minus one. For this one, definitely use the calculator because the hand calculations are kind of heavy. If you can try one with a problem, it's very good. If not, calculator will do it. So with calculator, go to stat, test, again, scroll down, find zero to sample T interval, same as case number two. So the difference is when it's asked for pool, don't say no, say yes. So then the calculator will give you the, the interval. Example, construct the indicated confidence interval for the difference between two population means. Assume that the two samples are independent. So this is for independent sample and they have been randomly selected. A researcher wishes to determine whether with high blood pressure can reduce their blood pressure by the following particular diet, whether people with high blood pressure. Use the sample data below to construct 99% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2, where mu1 and mu2 represent the mean of the treatment group and the control group respectively. We have the treatment group and the control group. These are two different populations. So here we can say sigma one is not equal to sigma two. Let's see what's given. N1, X bar one, S1. So sigmas are not given, therefore we're gonna use T. And sigma one is not equal to sigma two Therefore, it's not pooled. So it's case number two here. That's what we're going to do. And I did this. Let's go directly to our calculators. So you can again find all the given substitute. And I put here it's case number two. But with calculator, go to stat, go to test. Again, on the right side, up right side, scroll down to zero two sample T interval, you're gonna see if it says pooled, and of course it's not pooled. So you highlight no, and he calculate, you get negative 30.7 and 1.499. Sometimes the answers from the book, they're done 
width by using the calculation. So they're a little bit different from the calculator. If that happens, pick the closest number and your answer will be right. Actually, calculator is more exact than just read the, uh, instead of reading the table. And there are a lot of decimal points here. So sometimes the answers are not the same. The closest answer to what calculator gives is, is this one. So use that. And uh, D is the closest one, so D is the answer. Okay, please listen to this recording a couple of times. Uh, estimating two population, the difference of two populations, proportions, and the difference of two populations means it's pretty straightforward and easy. The formulas are wrong, but then in this case, use of calculator is, uh, I think it's beneficial. However, make sure to know the formulas. Don't memorize them but at least use them for a couple of problems there that way you're going to know the formula and the calculator use and i think that's it for this lecture okay have a good one everyone and i'll see you soon